State Commission. Dear uh, ladies and gentlemen and guests, the State Commission have confirmed the main and the backup crew of Soyuz 25. And the management of the State Space Agency as well as the State Commission discussed preparation, training of the crew, uh, processing of the launch vehicle. And they have made decision on launch of crew transportation vehicle with the International Crew of Expedition 25. This vehicle launch starts flight tests of crew transportation vehicle of the onboard uh, digital complex. The, the total duration of flight is 158 days. Large scope of work has been performed. The extensive program of scientific experiments is in place yesterday. In accordance with the final stage of preparation for the launch of the launch vehicle at the launch complex, results were obtained in full compliance with recommendation of uh, integrated testing. All activities were performed with high uh, performance quality. Dear members of the State Commission, in order to perform space flights of Expeditions 25 and 26 International Space Station, the following crew were prepared. The main crew, Kareli Alexander Yulevich, Soyuz Vehicle Commander and Flight Engineer of the ISS, Skripachka Oleg Ivanovich, Flight Engineer of Soyuz Vehicle, Flight Engineer of the Station. And Scott Kelly, Flight Engineer of the Soyuz Vehicles and Flight Engineer of Expeditions 25 and 26. Backup crew, Volkov Sergei Alexandrovich Soyuz Vehicle, Commander and Flight Engineer of the ISS. <coughs> Kananenko, flight engineer of Soyuz and of the ISS. Kananenko, Expedition 25 and 26. The program has been performed to the fullest scope. All the cosmonauts have undergone all the tests, exams. Uh, the, main, the main medical commission concluded that all the crew members are ready for space flight. Commission at the Cosmonaut Training Center reviewed results of training of the uh, performance of the cosmonauts and certifies that the crew of Expeditions 25 and 26 is ready to perform their flight program on tra crew transportation vehicle and on the Russian segment. Uh, the pre launch processing. At the launch complex is performed, is completed, and based on the above, we are proposing the State Commission is proposing to approve the main crew of Soyuz vehicle TMA 01M, uh, Commander Kaleri, Flight Engineer Skripach Kaleri Ivanovich, and Flight Engineer and Backup Crew Volkov Sergei Alexandrovich, Flight Engineer. Kananenko, Oleg Dmitrievich, and flight engineer Ron Garan. End of report. Thank you. Dear State Commission members, in order to perform space flight for Expeditions 25 and 26 of the International Space Station, the following crew were trained. The main crew, Kaleri Alexander Yurevich, Soyuz 
vehicle commander and ISS flight engineer, Skripechka Oleg Ivanovich, flight engineer of Soyuz vehicle and flight engineer of ISS, Scott Kelly, flight engineer of uh, two Soyuz vehicles and expeditions 25 and 26, flight engineer, backup crew, Volkov Sergei Alexandrovich, vehicle commander and ISS flight engineer, Kananenko, flight engineer of the Soyuz and of the ISS, and Ron Guerin, a flight engineer of two Soyuz vehicles and commander of Expeditions 25 and 26. The program has been completed. All the cosmonauts and astronauts are healthy and they have passed all the tests. Scott, Oleg, you are well prepared and ready to go to uh, what I consider uh, one of the most historic uh, set of increments to uh, be concluded on the ISS, and that is the last two shuttle assembly flights. Дорогие Олег, Скотт и Александр, я считаю, что вы полностью готовы к проведению вашего полета. Я считаю, что ваш предстоящий полет является воистину историческим, потому что именно во время вашей орбитальной вахты произойдут полеты два последних полета космического корабля системы Шаттл. So given the significance of your expedition, I think it's most appropriate that you are launching uh, from the very pad where space flight began some 53 years ago. We just celebrated its anniversary this Monday. Я считаю, что не является случайностью то, что ваш запуск будет произведен с того самого места, с того самого старта, где 53 года, а эту дату мы будем праздновать в понедельник, 53 года назад состоялся первый исторический запуск спутника. So good luck, Godspeed, and we'll talk to you when you get to orbit. Удачи, семь путов под килем и до встречи на орбите. Спасибо. Thank you. Very sad where space flight began some 53 years ago. We just celebrated its anniversary this Monday. Я считаю, что не является случайным то, что ваш запуск будет произведен с того самого места, с того самого старта, где 53 года, это даже мы будем праздновать в понедельник, 53 года назад состоялся первый исторический запуск спутника. So good luck, Godspeed, and we'll talk to you when you get to orbit. Удачи, всем будто под килем, и до встречи на рынке. Спасибо. Goodbye. Как всегда, у нас хотелось бы здесь присутствовать. As usual, uh, we have to state here, I would like to say that the crew is ready for flight and I would like to thank everyone who has created this vehicle and, and who made sure that it's ready for flight. We're going to do our best and fulfill your expectations and your trust. Thank you. I would like to join my commander and say that the program uh, is fulfilled and we're ready for flight. And I want to thank all the specialists who participated in getting everything ready for us. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone here. And also, I want to say we're ready. We believe that since we've been entrusted with the flight, we're going to do our best. We are very fortunate to have worked with Sergei and Valery. And I have learned a lot. It was a great honor for me. And I believe that it's and there could be no better crew than Sasha and Oleg. Dear friends, colleagues, the State Commission, having heard the report of the scientific scientific test at Cosmonaut Training Center of Mr. Krikalev, uh, 
about the composition of the main and the backup crew of the Soyuz vehicles, as well as the report of the president of the academy and the technical lead of flight testing and technical complexes about the readiness of the space rocket space complex for further operations to launch operations has decided to approve the um, Soyuz TMA um, vehicle main crew Kaleri Alexander Yurevich, flight engineer Skripochka Oleg Ivanovich, flight engineer 2 Kelly Scott Joseph, backup crew Commander uh, Volkov Sergei Alexandrovich, flight engineer Kananenko Oleg Dmitrievich, flight engineer Ron, Ronald, Guerin, Ronald John Guerin. Uh, and they will continue training at the space complex. I have questions about integrity of equipment. Uh, there was offloading done at the very vehicle in a non-standard form, and it has been discovered that the integrity is intact, but the decision has been made uh, to organize a commission, committee, and the committee is going to t test thoroughly all the mechanical interface elements and to conduct launch in December according to the schedule that has been established, at least within the month of December. Uh, a more accurate comment. Uh, is not possible right now. I would prefer not to give it, but um, in October, uh, throughout the month of October, we're going to get a, a good, accurate understanding as to what the further course of actions is going to be. But for today, we're certain that this flight, uh, the exterior of the vehicle looks nominal, but we have no right to take any chances and we have to conduct a thorough inspection and to report to this committee afterwards and to collect uh, proposals of this uh, commission and then make decisions accordingly. The official meeting of the state commission is over. Thank you. Uh, please allow me to adjourn the special meeting of the State Commission. Let's get started. Good evening. Greetings at the ground of the uh, cosmonaut Training Center at Baikonur Cosmodrome. At 17.10 local time, launch has been planned. A transport, crew transportation vehicle, Soyuz TMA. Um, an hour ago, the State Committee Commission has approved the main crew, a commander of Soyuz TMA, Kaleri Alexander Yurevich, flight engineer of Soyuz TMA, uh, flight engineer of ISS, Skripochka Oleg Ivanovich, flight engineer 2 of TMA Soyuz, ISS flight engineer, Soyuz uh, TMA 25 and 26, Scott Kelly. Backup crew approved. Commander of TMAM Soyuz, flight engineer of ISS Volkov Sergei Alexandrovich. Flight engineer of Soyuz and ISS Kononenko Oleg Dmitrievich. Flight engineer of TPK Soyuz TMA, Soyuz 25 and 20, ISS 26, Ronald Guerin. Prior to asking questions, of the astronauts and cosmonauts, I would like to present winners of the competition of child's drawing. There are two winners. Today they have drawn an emblem for this particular crew and also for TMA-20 Soyuz crew. 
This competition is conducted by Roscosmos, and the winners are provided the opportunity to arrive at Baikonur to see the cosmonauts and astronauts and to watch the launch vehicle launch. Uh, this is the winner who has drawn an emblem for the current crew, Alexander Turos from Michurinsk and Marina Kononenko from Snezhnogorsk. They would like to say a couple of words to this crew. I am wishing you luck so that everything goes well for you. Thank you, Sasha. I am wishing you a happy flight. Thank you, Marinochka. We'll do that. We're going to fly and come back. Thank you for your wishes. Now everything will be all right, that's for sure. Maybe Scott will say a couple of words. Thank you, Alexander and Marina. The crew is signing pictures with their autographs for, their ch for the children. As soon as the children walk out, we're going to convey the pictures to them. Also, the kids would like to lean their hands against the glass. Yes. Look. She's been asking, what is going to happen? How are we going to do that? Look at him, Marina. Look at him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's let the guys go. And now you may ask questions. Please. Daniel San BBC. Вопрос к Скотту Келли. Скотт, вы уже давно летаете астронавтом? No, absolutely not. I think uh, we're very fortunate to have our. Я думаю, нам повезло. У нас со своими российскими партнерами, иначе бы нам никак так и не удалось добраться до МКС. Это замечательное партнерство, сотрудничество. Если вы хотите полететь на низкую околоземную орбиту, экономическая действительность. Такова это нам необходимо это делать после того, как шаттл перестанет летать. Большая просьба перевести. Вопрос был к Скотту по поводу того, что не разочарован. There was a question to Scott whether he is not disappointed whether the space shuttle program is going to be over next year, and he says, "No, not at all. I'm very happy that we have our Russian partners who allow us to, uh, who provide the space transportation to the ISS." Thank you. Another question. Rob Navius with NASA Television. Two questions for Scott. First of all. Uh, your thoughts as you prepare to become the first space shuttle commander to launch on a Soyuz vehicle, and how complex will your five and a half months with you and your crewmates be aboard the station, particularly after you become station commander on November 30th? The question is for Scott again. Uh, Scott is the first space shuttle commander that is going, who is going to fly um, on Soyuz. And what are his expectations of being at the station and, and later on as a commander of the station? The first question is, I actually didn't realize that until very recently. I knew I would be the uh, third space shuttle commander to command the uh, International Space Station. So the response to the first question is, prior to very recent time, I couldn't even understand that I would be flying as the third commander of the space shuttle. But now that I know that, and, uh, you know, I'll certainly uh, 
I think I think regardless, I would have been you know having somewhat of a test pilot mindset to the uh, the ascent and trying to you know take in the whole experience from that perspective and uh, maybe I'll do that even more so now that I know that that fact. And right now, since I know this fact, I'm going to focus more on understanding how to be the commander of the station. The answer to the second part of the question is, um, you know, as we retire the uh, space shuttle, um, our increment is dedicated to preparing uh, in, in some respect for the post-shuttle error. Ответ на вторую часть вопроса, когда перестанет летать шаттл, то наш экипаж, он как бы, наверное, должен провести подготовку для пост-шаттловской эры. So we, as a result, we have uh, many visiting vehicles, two space shuttles, uh, progress vehicles, the Soyuz ATV, which is the European Space Agency resupply vehicle and an HTV, which is the Japanese resupply vehicle. And because of that, we must greet many visiting vehicles besides the shuttle progress, ATV, the European cargo vehicle, and HTV vehicle. Aggressive and, and comp complicated uh, science program will make for a uh, very busy uh, increment for both the Expedition 25 and 26 crews, and uh, you know, but I think I think we're up up to the task. Ну и принимая во внимание тот факт, что мы встречаем так много кораблей, плюс очень сложная научная программа, она сделает полет 25-26 экспедиции довольно сложный. Но я думаю, мы для этого готовы. And briefly, Scott, uh, your brother Mark is here with family members to see you off on Friday morning. Uh, he will command the shuttle Endeavour next February on one of the final shuttle missions to visit you and your crew at that time on the International Space Station. Your thoughts on the uniqueness uh, on twin brothers teaming up as respective commanders of those vehicles in orbit, something you probably couldn't have dreamt in your wildest imagination. Вопрос, что брат Скотта Марк, который будет его провожать в пятницу в полет, также будет являться командиром крайнего полета шаттла на станцию. И какие мысли у Скотта по поводу того, что два брата-близнеца будут на станции вместе одновременно? Yeah, I think, as, of course, as, uh, as kids growing up, we never thought we would be in this, uh, you know, unique and uh, privileged uh, position to be able to do this. Ну да, я думаю, когда мы росли еще детьми, мы никогда не думали о том, что у нас будет такая уникальная и положительная возможность сделать это. However, you know, my brother's launch was supposed to be in July, so it really is just a strange coincidence that it was delayed and delayed such that it's in the end of our increment. Однако, да, сначала старт моего брата планировался на июль, но тут произошло такое совпадение событий, что в принципе под конец нашего полета нашего экипажа он прилетает. Yeah, so from a personal aspect, it's uh, it's interesting to us, and it will certainly enhance the uh, the experience somewhat. Персональный аспект это да, действительно будет интересно, это и увеличит как бы опыт мой. However, that is. Uh, absolutely secondary to, to both of our primary focus of, uh, you know, completing the mission safely and, uh, you know, completing all the, the mission objectives. Но с другой стороны, что касается безопасности нашего полета и выполнения цели полета, это уже более вторичный факт. Спасибо. Thank you. Natalia Bursova, Studio Roscosmos. Alexander Kaleli, first question. Please tell us. Right now, the head of our agency, Perminov, has delegated a book to write, um, a book to you. What kind of book is it, and what is the mission of that book? And also, if you can tell us, how can the cosmonauts and the astronauts switch to night 
life, you would have to miss out a lot on sleep. And how would you handle this difficult situation? Well, there is nothing strange or special about switching to a different time. Everyone has to sometimes miss out on sleep and do something at night, maybe greet relatives at the rail station or pick them up from the airport. And we have the same people, the same work. Uh, we have pretty reasonable schedule for, tom for tomorrow. We're going to have two areas of rest. And as adult people, we're going to get ready for night shift. And further, once we're at the station, we're going to get back to normal and we're going to be working according to the regular schedule. As far as the book question, yes, indeed, we have been given a book. And it's a, an edition uh, of Tolstoy's Sevastopol short stories. The French diaspora uh, asked us, since they're having an anniversary, uh, to pick up this book, take it on board, and we're going to be very happy to do that. And right now, it's already been conveyed to be stowed for, on the vehicle. Um, Sevastopol, every Russian person knows what Sevastopol means. We don't have to explain that. And uh, what it means for the Russian culture, Russian people, uh, what, what Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy means is also pretty clear. Um, in addition, uh, we have personal connections, relationship with the city of Sevastopol, its history, its events. So we'll be most happy to do that. I think that this book is going to come back to the, to Earth, um, along together with Fyodor Yurchikhin, uh, maybe to closer towards the winter, at the end of November. Thank you. One more question. Uh, we have three crew members. We also have backup crew. Tom Cook with ABC. Scott. Tom Cook. What does it uh, mean to you to have all your family and friends ABC. Come all this way to see you uh, watch this launch? And secondly, besides your family and friends, and of course, Eyewitness News in the morning, what will you miss most in your six months in space? Uh, question for Scott. Well, Tom, it's, uh, it's a long trip out here, and, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of sacrifice and time and, uh, to, to make the trip, so it means, uh, means a lot to me for my family and friends, the ones that could make it, uh, to be here, um, certainly. Um, and, you know, that's what I'll miss, mostly. Uh, family and friends, and uh, probably a little bit of fresh air as well. But uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a great experience, and we're going to have a very uh, successful mission. The launch is very close, and uh, indeed, I appreciate that my family and my friends are sacrificing their time, and I will miss it a lot. Well, perhaps a few. Uh, breaths of fresh air as well. Thank you. More questions? Uh, two questions, both addressed to all three of the crew. The first one regarding the place. What do you think about the place, Baikonur, um, about having to come here for the launch? And if you could choose a place, any place on Earth, to have a launch, where would that be? The second question, have you all seen the film The White Sun of the Desert and that film? And what do you think about that film and about its significance in terms of superstition. Two questions to all three crew members.
Of course, Baikonur is a historic site for us. That's where the launch of the first Sputnik occurred. The first man flew from here, man in space. And uh, we're continuing this tradition up to now. We're hoping to maintain this tradition in the future. And uh, the denizens of Baikonur always have warm welcome for the cosmonauts. It means that it means a lot for the town itself. As far as the white sun of the desert is concerned, well, it's an old tradition uh, to watch that film prior to launch. And in addition, it's a great film. So it's a great pleasure to watch it. Um, I have watched it here as a backup crew for the first time. And now, among the new crew, and I, I'm just hoping that everybody enjoyed mo watching this movie. I would like to say a couple of words. Uh, many of you probably were here uh, at the first site and launch site, and you probably remember the words that are written on that uh, ground here uh, with the name of a Soviet man. Uh, a bold exploration of space has begun. I don't think you can say it better than that. It was an achievement of the entire people, entire country, and it's a great accomplishment to which we have devoted their lives, so to speak. And if you think about it, it's a simple, uh, as a simple military person, I was lucky to have to have met him. Uh, Scott, have you ever heard of this tradition to, of watching this film? Of course, Baikonur is a, uh, you know, a historic location and a, uh, you know, there's a lot of tradition here. So I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to launch here. My two previous flights have been from Florida. And also a big tradition is the, uh, the film that was mentioned, which I've seen several times and we'll see here again soon. Ну, естественно, хочу сказать, что Байконур это историческое и традиционное место для полетов, поэтому я горжусь тем, что отсюда полечу, потому что два моих предыдущих полета я делал из Флориды. Белое солнце пустыни, да, его уже много раз видел, и сейчас тоже с удовольствием посмотрю перед стартом. Спасибо. Thank you. There is a question, I think. First channel, Maxim Voronin. We know that the vehicle where you're going to fly there using some new digital technologies which weren't there in the past. Has it affected the process of control? Or what has changed? Has it become easier? Uh, what essentially has changed and how uh, did you get adapted to new technologies if you had to get adapted? Indeed, as we say, it's a vehicle with updated onboard systems. The updates concern control, motion control system and, uh, and navigation uh, telemetry system, as well as uh, uh, onboard computer complex, onboard measurement system. It's no secret that the Soyuz vehicle that's been flying right now has uh, obtained its digital complex very a long time ago, and the technology that was used there was the last last century technology. The current vehicle that is going to fly is different in in a way that the computer complex that is created there. Um, is created with a different architecture that has greater capabilities for the development for the functional development for performance of vehicle systems and it will provide new interesting opportunities as far as the motion control uh, is concerned today is the first step during this mission uh, we are starting the flight um, design test stage but it doesn't mean that everything is going to be completed in one flight 
our backup crew is going to go further. Uh, they will have to fly the future generation vehicles of that series, and they would all, they're would they also looking forward to very interesting work. And we are going to cooperate all together, and we're going to teach it how to fly, even though we already know how to fly. They already know how to fly it. And we're going to create a, a new control platform uh, in order to add new quality to crew operation and towards expansion of vehicle capabilities as a transportation vehicle and as a crew vehicle on orbit. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Kellogg from Fox News. I have a question for Scott. Um, I wonder if when you were a boy growing up training to be an astronaut, you ever thought in your wildest dreams that you would be working so closely with Russian cosmonauts? And, and maybe if you could describe the differences in approach or the, the different ways that the Russians and the Americans work. And, and um, similarly, I would like to ask either Oleg or Alexander if uh, if the reverse the reverse of that question if when they were growing up they ever thought they'd be working closely with American astronauts and and how they see uh, the differences in approach to work in outer space thank you вопрос Скотта Келли когда он рос был мальчиком еще мечтал стать астронавтом думал ли он что он будет так близко работать с российскими коллегами и летать в космосе и в чем разница подхода к подготовке на российской и американской стороне? И точно такой же вопрос, но наоборот, для Александра и Олега. Well, when I was uh, growing up in, in West Orange, New Jersey, I was, uh, you know, followed the Apollo program, um, you know, as a kid, as much as I could, I was aware of it. Also was aware of the Apollo Soyuz uh, project, which was a, uh, you know, a partnership between uh, the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and uh, so I, I was aware that that uh, kind of partnership in space existed, but um, I never thought I would become an astronaut. I think a lot of kids uh, dream of that, but um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's a dream, and uh, and and I'm I'm living the dream right now as having this uh, privilege to get to launch in space tomorrow. Ну, когда я рос в Нью-Джерси, я пытался, ну, поскольку был маленький, пытался следить, насколько мог, за программой Аполлон, за программой Союз Аполлон. То есть, в принципе, я уже с тех времен знал о партнерстве, о взаимной работе наших двух государств. Но, опять же, я никогда не думал, что, тогда еще даже не думал, что стану астронавтом. А сейчас для меня, конечно, это большая честь, что буквально завтра уже я полечу в космос. And there are, you know, there are some small differences in how we do things, but uh, by and large, the, uh, the similarities are much more significant in that we're all professionals. We all take this uh, serious business very seriously. And, uh, you know, our primary focus is, uh, you know, safety and, and completing the uh, mission objectives. As far as немножко разные, но есть одна очень большая и важная одинаковая вещь. Это то, что все работают очень высоко профессионально и выполняют свое дело, и все нацелено на безопасность и на выполнение завершения миссии. Ну. I also belong to that generation which, uh, when we observed it when we were growing up as, as young boys, we didn't doubt that if we only want something very much, we can do anything we want in our country. And I was certain that I would find a way to become a cosmonaut. That's when I was a, in school. But even when I was undergoing cosmonaut selection, and that was 1982-83, I had no, it didn't occur to me that I would be collaborating, I would be flying on joint programs with 
uh, my colleagues. But the time had passed. We started collaborating, and it became a very interesting program. So looking back at previous flights, I could agree with Scott that Although approaches and engineering uh, techniques may be different and various uh, engineering foundations and traditions, the goal that we have is the same. It's life and work in space for the sake of the entire humanity, all the countries in the world, and of course, a completion of flight program and safety assurance and quality of our performance are important. Uh, when I was undergoing selection in the late 90s, uh, the col collaboration was fully deployed already between the United States and uh, Russia. It was mere NASA program. We already understood with whom we we're going to be working. We just didn't know exactly how. And we were not too familiar with traditions and approach uh, of uh, other partners. But taking into consideration the fact that the flight is a, is a summit of our training, uh, in the process of flight, one could get a better understanding of what is different and what is common. Thank you. Natalia Burtseva, a question for the backup crew. Uh, it's very important. Your opinion is important for Sergei. The main crew training, how is it different from the backup training? Are there any difference? And also, the American Space Agency, do they have a notion of backup crew there? Do they also have backup crew for all the astronauts? And thank you for your question. No. In Russia, the differences uh, between uh, tra in training are non-existent between the backup crew and the main crew. And the final decision is made uh, officially at the State Commission, which is what happened an hour and a half ago, literally. Although, of course, we have discussed it among ourselves that we have arrived here, first of all, to support the main crew because the day after tomorrow we'll have to see them off uh, and we have to make sure that they have uh, taken off. And now, do, do you feel some kind of relief? Uh, I think that the entire six persons who are sitting here are going to breathe a sigh of relief when the launch vehicle takes off. And when they... And when they the, we know that the guys have finally took off to work, and we can prepare for our main flight. Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, we, <clears throat> in the past, we had uh, backups in the NASA program, and uh, we went away from that a, a, a few years ago, uh, many years ago, actually. And um, good question. Uh, I think it's a really good idea to have uh, backup, uh, a backup crew for, for a mission. Um, I think, uh, I don't know the real reason why we don't do it anymore. What I assume the reason is, is uh, when you have a crew of seven, you'd have to have seven backup uh, crew members, and that's just probably too many to have uh, in training. But it's a really good idea because you... Uh, get really good experience as a backup, and then you're ready for when it's your time to be prime. No, на самом деле я считаю, что, конечно, да, это очень хорошая идея, когда есть дублирующий экипаж. Я конкретной причины не знаю, но думаю, скорее всего, что когда семь человек основного экипажа и плюс семь человек дублирующего экипажа, это слишком много людей надо на подготовке проводить. А вообще, конечно, я очень согласен с идеей того, что был дублирующий экипаж, потому что получаешь ту же, проходишь ту же подготовку, получаешь тот, тот же опыт. Спасибо. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Елена Гимон, телеканал Rush Today. Елена Гимон, ТВ канал Rush Today. For you personally, what part of the experiment is most exciting, and where can you show your creative potential? Uh, 
And the second question is, do you feel what you're doing, do you feel its tangible contribution uh, into the development of humanity? We have uh, to perform a few dozens of experiments. Each one of them is interesting in its own way. Uh, perhaps the most creative uh, uh, one is this Earth service monitoring that is related to video and photo uh, filming. And we have to do it um, a lot. Uh, uh, this is done uh, towards uh, the goal of studying nature and natural phenomena better. Uh, so I think that is a contribution to the development of humanity. I also think that uh, most interesting experiments are those where uh, you are forced to be creative, and uh, Earth surface observation, monitoring, especially using photo cameras, is always um, uh, a search of, of something unusual, something interesting, something wondrous, surprising, that you can share with other people. And, of course, this is very exciting. As far as the other extra experiments are concerned, um, they're also uh, very interesting to different deg to various degrees, and our involvement varies there. Uh, there are medical biological experiments, uh, and the priorities are uh, different depending on the experimenter. The goal is to deliver quality information, to fulfill expectations, and to bring interesting results. Uh, and the thoughts we have, the prevailing thoughts we have, are to do it to the best of our ability, to do it with the best accuracy, uh, to f fulfill the initial plans, and to obtain good results. I think we've... Um through a very uh, great international partnership, we've built a very uh, sophisticated and capable space station that's just reaching the, uh, the prime of its life. Uh, and it's just now getting into a, a position where it can do the, uh, the, the kind of science that it was uh, planned for. And I think it will have a, uh, a long-lasting and uh, significant legacy. And I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Arman Gonchirenko, Radio Deutsche Welle. A question to everyone. Uh, the journalists see you as very serious people, especially Scott, who hardly ever smiles. Were there any situations in flight, which may, comical situations, that made you smile? I'm having fun right now. <laughs> no, actually, it, uh, you know, flying in space is a very serious business, but we will, uh, we will find time to, uh, to enjoy it. Um, you know, both are, um, you know, enjoying the company and the uh, unique privilege it is to fly in space. Ну, на самом деле, сам полет в космос по себе является очень серьезным делом, но я уверен, что мы найдем время для того, чтобы как бы порадоваться этому событию и порадоваться там собраться вместе и порадоваться тому, что действительно у нас есть честь того, чтобы быть в космосе. Спасибо. Thank you. Первый канал снова. Знаете, у меня дополнительный вопрос об экспериментах. An additional question for 
about experiments. I spoke to the authors of those experiments and understood that most of them are conducted in highly specialized areas. Did you have to obtain some kind of special knowledge in order to conduct those experiments, in order to approximate them to the greatest degree to what the authors of those experiments uh, designed? Of course, um, in my view, from my point of view, as I was taught back at the Institute, it would be very impudent of me to claim that I have obtained some special knowledge, uh, because you cannot uh, have the same knowledge in, in broad areas of knowledge, of expertise, biology, medicine, technology, physics, uh, theoretical physics, uh, geophysics, informatics. It's impossible. But of course, we do undergo special training at all stages of our careers. Uh, cosmonaut training, starting with an overall general training, and so on and so forth. And uh, in the methodology, in the procedures of training and operations, uh, scientific operations uh, and research, there is always familiarization with the meaning of experiment, with scientific goals, with scientific foundations of that idea which is being tested in that experiment, with the results that are obtained, with their relevance. And afterwards, do we get familiarized with the instruments and with methodology, with procedures. So we do receive training, specialized training to a sufficient degree. Thank you. More questions. Scott, could you talk a little bit about the different approaches you've trained for a shuttle mission and now uh, Soyuz launch? Could you talk a little bit about the different approaches in training? The, uh, the differences between training for a, a shuttle mission and a, a space station mission are, are significant. Um, on a shuttle flight that's one to two weeks long, you basically train um, a, a timeline um, very precisely. It's very scripted, and you know, for the most part, exactly what you're going to do at any minute of the flight. Разница в подготовке к полету на шаттле и на космической станции довольно большая, потому что на шаттле, который порядка двух недель длится полет, там идет подготовка конкретно, четко привязанная к временам, где циклограмма уже известна и жестко ей надо следовать. And of course, on a on a six month flight or a long duration flight, that would be impossible to do. So our our training is more for the most part, although we do some specific training, is mostly uh, more generic, I, I guess would be the best term, or lack of a better term, generic in nature. But they're both very, uh, you know, complicated and sophisticated, but in their their own way. Ну, все равно и та и та подготовка очень сложные, каждая в своем образе. Спасибо. Thank you. Rob Navius, NASA TV for Scott. Um, you and your crewmates, as well as Doug Wheelock, Fyodor Yurchik, and Shannon Walker, you'll be on orbit uh, with each other on November 2nd, on the 10th anniversary of the start of human occupancy of the International Space Station that began with Bill Shepard and Sergey Krikalov and Yuri Gidzenko on Expedition 1. How significant a milestone is that to maintain this facility with unbroken population for a decade and now a station that uh, will have its life extended to at least 2020? Вопрос к Скотту. Они своим экипажем будут праздновать десятилетнюю годовщину обитаемости Международной космической станции, когда Сергей Крикалев, Юрий Гидзенко и Билл Шепард открыли эту эру. Насколько важна для вас вот эта дата 
И что вы думаете о том, что ну, станция работает и продлен ее срок еще как минимум на, до 25 года? You know, when I reflect back on um, the last 10 years and the, uh, you know, what we've built from the, uh, starting with the first launch of a uh, space station element, the FGB here in uh, Baikonur 10 years ago. Ну, я работал 10 лет назад, и когда первый обитаемый модуль Международной космической станции ФГБ стартовал отсюда же, с Байконура. You know, I think of a couple things. First is the... Uh, you know, the efforts of, of thousands of people around the world that, that took to pull off this uh, amazing achievement. And then I think just how, how complicated and, uh, you know, incredible an achievement it is to build this space station in... Uh, different countries using different technologies um, you know while orbiting the earth and at 17,500 miles an hour and extremes of temperatures in a you know radiation environment uh, you know put together by astronauts and cosmonauts in these very difficult to work uh, spacesuits I think you know it's probably one of the diff most difficult and complicated things human beings have accomplished <coughs> Во-вторых, я думаю, насколько сложно uh, пришлось людям построить все-таки эту станцию, которая с невероятной скоростью летит по орбите uh, в невероятных температурах, uh, радиации и так далее. Uh, то есть, действительно, я думаю, это одно из самых больших достижений человечества. Спасибо. Все? Ну, вы знаете, на этой, наверное... Well, and on this note, we're going to wish our cosmonauts and astronauts a uh, good flight, and the backup crew will prepare for their main flight. Thank you. Let's thank the crew for all the work we have done together. The main crew, please pose for the picture. Alexander Yurevich, you were called the most serious member of the crew. Let's smile more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.